as what they find as viable slash non-viable. What are we expecting to see here Ooh. as we see an immediate Pyrrha band away? Yeah, by both regions are not prioritizing Pyrrha, though. It's surprising that Omen actually didn't see as much love. We see VVV banning away that Omen, but Pyrrha, it's, it's surprising to see how the kind of band trends have changed here for North America a little bit. And we can see that Drawn to Fame has normally banned away like Violet, Nina, for example. They don't like Arm, so I feel like Arm will show up as they ban potentially. Uh, Vidin Vidvici does not like Crash. They also like banning Arm as well, and also Chognar. So let's see if, if Drawn to Fame bans Arm, maybe they'll ban the Chognar. So far, we're seeing relatively standard bans coming out. I would. S uh, man, I, the fact that these are becoming standard bans is absolutely crazy. We're seeing how this is shifting. Pura and Slims, the, the denial for Drawn to Fame. Aurum needs to make a home in these bands because if you let her through in the right hand, she is just... Ooh, what is, they're gonna what is... target ban Ninja here and be like, yo, you're not gonna play your Raz that you're so good on. And Ninja is denied his Raz and let's see if they're gonna deny maybe Lumber? Because we know Zoom loves playing Lumber, so... Or they can, you know, ban Valheim, Violet, you know, Arum. Still a lot of good options, but I feel like Arum will probably be the ban. Just based on their history here, they banned um, a lot of Omen and Arum. So let's see if that's going to come out. And we're seeing now, with what Drawn to Fame has done, only basically target banning here, they have left up so we go. many strong picks on the board right now. I mean, we have Violet, we have Valheim, we have... Valheim. Okay. But Violet is open, so now you can take Violet with a Xenio, or you can do Xenio with the Malik. There's a lot of strong picks still open for them, but I feel like Xenio is going to be picked up with Violet most likely here. Um, that leaves Flash open. I would love John to fan pick up Flash against the Violet pick, because Flash is so good into Violet. Um, and Marja is open. We saw Marja being a high priority in the last game in North America. Ari a big priority. Roxy is actually being shown a lot, getting a lot of play in North America as well. A lot of options for both teams. One of the discussions obviously that has to be had is the Violet Valheim matchup. With Violet of course having that additional range does do quite well into. So you're kind of potentially leaving yourself a little bit exposed here with that first pick Valheim. As hotly contested this, this pick has been, his win rate has not been Ooh. very good. They're going to take up that Irie right away and then maybe they'll combo it with a Liliana because they wanted to have that stun. But honestly, Violet is, is great here. Um, Xenio is also great. So maybe they can take Violet, uh, sorry, Irie and Xenio because giving a Xenio composition over to uh, a Valheim composition means you can combo that cursed uh, death stun that, that Valheim throws out with a Xenio Malice. And that's dangerous. Um, and also Xenio is going to offer so much protection to whoever the hyper carry is. There we go. Xenio will be picked up. And that leaves Violet open. For Drawn to Fame, will they pick up that Violet and then also secure maybe the Flash? Teamy we'll see. Teamy is still available too, though. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Teamy's team is left available. Malik is left available. Marja as well in a lot of instances. Malik, Jeez. actually, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Malik not picked in this game. Uh, hilariously enough, Malik is the lowest win rate in the entirety of North America wow. of any hero picked above 80%. 93% of games tied with Violet, mind you. Coming into this week, Malik and Violet had the same pick rate. Malik had 16% win rate. <laughs> Violet, 20% win rate. Wow. I haven't been impressed with either of them. Again, I think there's been a lot of overhype coming into the season, and we are actually starting to find out what's working. I think Marge is working. I think... Ooh, Lumber! Ooh, Man, uh, he really loves that Lumber. I mean, I, Zoom loves Lumber. He's good on him. Those Earth Splitters have been insane. The additional armor buff that he's getting, helping tank up, tank up his team a bit. And what better way to create essentially a front line to ensure that VVV doesn't get to that back that back DPS threat of the Valheim. Drawn to Fame certainly pulls themselves in an area. Yeah, but now have Violet with yeah, Malik now, now it Malik leaves Zinio, Now it leaves the Violet TV. open. Yeah, yeah Teamy will be TV good. Yeah, Teamy will be really good too, because you can basically um Mina will be also really solid with the Zenio and the Irie. So, because there's no, uh, actually, they can pick Chognar, though, but we'll Chog see. Chog could be pretty good, too. Yeah, Chog would be great counter to Mina, but let's see what, what they'll decide. Are they going to pick the Mage here? Are they going to pick a Support or a Side Laner and then switch the uh, Xenio to Support or maybe potentially like a Malak to Support or something? 
They have a lot of options. Yeah, so many options. I'm surprised this draft is kind of a little off meta because of that lumber Arjun pick there in the second phase. And, and also due yep, to the fact teamy, that yeah, called. we saw Pura, Slims, and Rise Bam. So those are three picks that we traditionally never see in the ban phase. Combine that with like a Crest as well, which is starting to make its appearance there. But that's three top S tier heroes that normally would never make it into a draft. I also like the fact that VVV is holding on to their mage pick until the very end because it gives them that final counter pick opportunity. Now there are two slots left available for Drawn to Fame. They need to find themselves a mid laner. They need to find themselves a uh, another little jungler. So what are they? What, do, what yeah, are we thinking on this? Flash would be solid here because he's so good against the Violet um, and he can go in there and get back out. We also know that Crixie is pretty solid, but Ari is gonna be able to jump on her and do so much damage. So they gotta be careful. Liliana is still an option. She's very popular for both teams. We know Yikes loves his Scud, but we have Vahim on the side lane, so they gotta pick like a Lindis potentially, um, with a maybe Jinnar. Yeah, maybe they'll do a Lindis Jinnar here. Let's see if Lindis will be picked up. I mean. Liliana is still on the board. So Ooh, I'm Morin. To see that. Wow. And the Morin pickup here Showing as well. Showing up in North America. I like it. Well, the sustainability now for the side of Drawn to Fame is huge. They're going to be able to endure in these team fights and go toe to toe with what we're going to be seeing from the team, from the Zenyo. Yeah, the Flash would be really good. Liliana would be really good as well. Crixie would be decent too because Jinnar wants to go in there and then she can just basically cast Moonfall and then knock him up and burst him um, and slow down his exuberance, engage. But Liliana has just so mobile, so much escapability, and she also has the range. I also think that Liliana just rounds out this composition as a whole very well. Outside of the Irie, which we saw in a lot of, in, uh, which is very sparsingly in season one, this looks very reminiscent of season some season one compositions that we were quite used to seeing day in, day out of the Valor series. Now, that Liliana has been switched over to a Crixie, 10 seconds left remaining before VVV gets to decide to change it, but instead, Five seconds left to go. They're going to go it. ahead and lock in that Liliana and round out their composition. I mean, I, I really like the draft for VVV. Yeah, both it's drafts are pretty good, but VVV's draft is very meta. I mean, it, it, it works. It's proven. Um, I love, I, I would like to draw attention, by the way, that, that the, so we, we act, we not act, but we are surprised when things actually end up meta because we've seen so much debauchery across the board <laughs> that once we actually see a normal composition, it's like, huh, pretty cool. I kind of like that. I haven't seen that often in a while. It's funny that the meta is not meta, it, which doesn't make any sense technically. If you, I, know, yeah. I know that. I know More that is sense, coming but... into the meta though. He's been super popular actually in GTS. Um, they're they're playing and picking it more often because they're realizing that all this type of CC sustain and like, he works really well in these compositions, but his positioning is everything. I guess when I, I look at that and I see how the Morin fits in, and I agree he's been doing such a great job, is that the compositions that we're seeing win the most aren't being drafted that often. Like, we, we, it's for us, obviously, we get to watch a lot of these games and we study all these regions. We're very familiar with what compositions tend to win. But a lot of times, teams aren't drafting compositions. Like, we look at it on paper, and you're like, I, and sometimes they surprise us. Sometimes they pull out that awesome, crazy draft, and oh, I see how it was executed. I see how that. But a lot of times, teams draft stuff, we're just like, no, and then they lose. <laughs> and they just <laughs> yeah. get wrecked. And or it's... they pull out something crazy, like Maganga, he was sustained, and they win. So it's like a risk-reward kind of thing. But we've yep. seen so many heroes work. Um, and it's amazing to see Vera being picked, Natalia, right? More than half uh, the hero Lauren, pool. Like, yeah, it's awesome to see like how well balanced the game is. Yeah. I will have to say, though, taking a look at these compositions, drawn to fame, it's all going to be on the lumber. Yeah. The lumber, if you take a look at what Veni Vidivici is running, their entire composition has the capability to get to the back line of Drawn to Fame. Their entire composition has the ability to destroy them in the team fights, and so it's going to come down to Zoom and his ability to play that lumber and using his ultimate as a tool to disengage his team and allow his back line of that Morn and Valheim to do the most amount of damage. Yeah, I definitely agree there. If Zoom can land a clutch or player, like, as we know he can land, that's going to change the tide of a fight quickly. Well, we're going to have to see what the tides will turn and where they will end up going. Drawn to fame versus Veni Vidi Vici in our last match of the day. Game number one starts now. Drawn to fame, starting things off with a very all-in close quarters combat composition 
up against a VVV who has much more of that ranged poke sustainability. We'll see who's going to come out on top here in game number one. Yeah, I'm excited to see how Blitz, Wizard, and Rude are going to show up in this game uh, based on their performance last week. And of course, Ninja, we have not seen him on a lot of Liliana, a lot of Raz, and it's been banned against him. So excited to see what Ninja can do on a Liliana. Ninja is definitely one of those players you have to watch for on BBB. This guy's been in the scene for a long time. Yeah, he's been he's ESPN too, right? I, I believe so. I know he's been, I, I remember I was talking at the beginnings of the day saying it was one of the guys he's really looking for on BBB to step up. So, uh, I was know. joking because Ninja from Fortnite was on ESPN. Okay. <laughs> was I, on a cover of ESPN magazine. Okay, I didn't quite hear what you said, and then I went, what, what? The, the ESPN? I was like, what are you? That is the Ninja, man. Yeah, yeah. That's Ninja yeah. playing Ninja. Wrong Ninja. He's not averaging 80k <laughs> viewers a day. Come on. But either way, uh, this Ninja has had some pretty solid performances for his squad. Uh, let's see if he can build his way to victory here and uh, let's get more. Yeah, that's exactly what you want to do as Valheim there is put the pressure because he wins against any melee hero because he has that range, has that constant stun. And the more stacks he gets his passive on you, the pocket glaive, the faster he moves, the faster he attacks. And that's why it makes him so good against melee heroes one for one. We are seeing collapse now into mid. As BBB looking to try and find a Lucifer there, but in the bush is going Look to be the backup this. there. But Valheim in the side lane, actually putting him down into the dragon side That's right now. That's what you want to do. You win dragon lane, you win river control, then you rotate and collapse onto dragon. You have to get an advantage. You have to get someone low here or bait something out. But this is perfect for uh, Morin because he, he's going to stack his, his passive and get that extra life steal there. And as a result, he can then counter engage if they try to steal it. Valheim with a beautiful stun to set that Ooh. up. Wizard had to burn the Pooty Poots way out of position. Yeah. And that means that Drawn to Fame was able to get that initial dragon. Irie is now way out of position here in the bottom. And Fly, ooh, able to escape. Nicely done there. That was huge. But that was exactly what Drawn to Fame. Watch, watch this initial stuff. Oh, actually, we're up to the top. Well, we actually saw another kill going in through all this as well. Waya nice. is going to fall. Nice job, rotation by Ninja. But they do get a first blood, and then they lose a the dragon. So it's OK. It's not too bad. However, you saw Wizard had to burn his flicker there. And look at the engage by Lucifer. Oh, Blitz is getting blitzed right now up at the top as Lucifer crew going in. The Earth Splitter does actually miss. We do have the Valheim picking up the blue buff there. So no kills actually going the way of Drawn of Fame. They do pick up a buff for their effort, but uh, Blitz survives. That was so close there. Blitz barely is keeping with his life, but you can see that why the Valheim is so strong, constantly putting pressure against McFly. Can't really do much. You know McFly, he was that push pushing champ on that Irie um, that we saw him you know, in the past like, few games in the Valor series. He's going to need to hit 88 miles per hour here in this game if his team has any chance at victory. The whole team really needs to step up right... Oh, oh wow, Wizard. Jumping right in there. But you know what? Rude, Rude I think actually did that to escape. I actually think he was forced... No, he's full health. I don't understand that Angelic Splendor at all. Yeah, definitely. That was not the best use of that, unfortunately. Now they have it down, so Rude does not have a key ultimate down for the next fight. So you have to wait until it's back up. Because I feel like without it, they're at a pretty big disadvantage. All the ultimates are up for Drawn to Fame here. It's also interesting to note that we didn't really mention this before, and I'll ca talk about it in a second right now. Zoom is getting a great Earth Splitter. Lucifer, though, they decided not to come into the fight. Instead, off to just back right. Ooh. Oh, the Reiki shot hits. The health pack able to keep him into this. Interesting to note that we actually, Yikes, who's traditionally been playing a lot of the side lane here for Drawn to Fame, is actually the jungle position yeah, right now. Yeah, he had an amazing scud. And look at this. His Morin is really showing up. So Drawn to Fame here, switching things up. and But so far, it's working for them. Yeah, he, he, is. he knows Morin. He knows the win condition, and it's just perfect. That's why Morin's so good, because he's taking objectives like this. You can't really contest him, because he's stacking, and he's ready to fight. He's mechanically one of the best heroes on the team right now, so the putting him on this jungle roll, I don't like that at all. But Blitz is there to steal out the dragon. Absolutely huge. That was exactly what BBB needed to keep him in this game. They're going to try and re-engage right now. There's wow. the flicker in. Oh, but the pushing them back into that magnetic storm. The Pooty Boots is going to come in there, but not actually be activated. That was absolutely massive. Perfect timing. There's Splitter catching every single member. And now we have Valheim on the flank right now, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the entire enemy team. The Flicker is there, and Yikes on the flank. I cannot believe this. Valheim 1v the entire team. Yeah, that was insane what he did there. Yikes with the impact barrage, pushing back the Flicker. McFly with that pooty poot didn't quite land it, and he had to activate his, his being a bro. No one died, though. Even with the Angelic Spinner from Rue coming in, they were not able to turn that fight around. Beautiful play by... Uh, Heights here with that Valheim coming in there, getting that kill, and then pushing and turning that fight right around. 
That could have been so bad for Drawn to Fame, but a couple of nice individual plays came off there. The fact that they didn't oh, activate the being a bro the first time around, we're not going to see it here. So really solid play from Drawn to Fame, despite the fact that it was a beautiful Dragon Snipe from BBV, just was not enough, and now they are certainly on the back step. Yeah, I don't know why Wizard jumped back in there. Your team is already running away, they already got low, just don't give another death, and look at this, Rude is in big trouble, but Yikes is focusing down that tower, they'll get the tier one, and now Vinny Vici is behind, now 1k go. But then again, the key is Wizard. He keeps going in at the wrong moment, and he's a little over eager. He needs to wait for his team to be ready so they can capitalize on that huge putty put stun. And one thing I want to note off the back of that top tower push is all the while, we saw Yikes never stop hitting that tower. As a new player, often it can be, you know, you want to say, oh, I want to go and I want to get these kills. Why don't we get these kills? But instead, focusing the tower is the best thing you can do as that jungle. And now we see the fight splitting. Rude is able to tank and split the team right now. Wizard is going to be low as Yikes has the kill. But a beautiful heal coming out. There's the air splitter. Going to totally whiff as Rude and Kuro try wow. to back up the stun. Connected the follow-up is there. And that is two kills for Draws. Yeah, Wyatt had a clutch ren there. He landed at knockup, allowed all his teammates to focus the damage and get the kill onto Rude there. Wizard again falling again. He has probably the most death on the team right now. So as Teamy. He's got to play a little more careful. Yeah, he has th three, three deaths. deaths on the entire team, and that's not good. He's going to be completely behind here in terms of level and just be an easier target. He has a res. Really should be dying three times right now. But I have to say, a lot of this come down to the fact that Drawn to Fame has done a fantastic job of denying uh, that being a bro ultimate right there. And a really nice magnetic score from Yikes, allowing him to just shred through that dragon. So that is two dragons to one right now for Drawn to Fame. That gold lead will start to add up. Of course, it is pretense. They're not going to get that buff. However, we are 43 seconds away from the first Dark Slayer. Yeah, they're not combo. Look at that. Oh, Wizard. The Putty Boots coming in. Ninja, they, he needs to combo the Binding Light with the Shining Light. And then they could have done so much damage against Jinnar there because Liliana can burst him down and with, with that follow-up stun. And they're not comboing that together. And that's costing them some really some advantageous engages here. Once again, Wizard is going to be chain CC'd into the ground. Rude is there, but it's too little too late. The being a bro goes off, but he's face to face with Waya in the back. Splitting the team beautifully is drawn to fame. Able to survive just a moment longer is Vinny Vinny Vinny. Yikes is going to be the target as well. McFly going to push back with the kicker spread as wow. we do have McFly surviving through it. And Blitz with the counter kill. Waya on the flight though, surviving in Fox form. It's going to be Ninja training back and forth. VVV showing some life. A little sloppy from both teams back and forth there, but beautiful Yikes there with the impact barrage pushing away McFly. McFly landed a nice Ryu ultimate, getting the stun, almost killing Yikes, and he backs off completely, but then Lucifer overextends and Zoom as well falls underneath that tower. They kind of Stay there, welcome. Overstay there, welcome. And here we go. This is the combo we were looking for as Ninja is going to look to go in. Doesn't land the combo perfectly, though. I think that he could have killed Valheim there. I'm super surprised. What just happened? Yeah, he needs to attack. Is when Liliana, you need to basically auto attack because she does a lot, especially when there's two or more heroes. She lands Binding Light. Her auto attacks actually do 5% of your health plus additional percentage based on ability power. So he needs to be aggressive with Liliana at the right time. He had a chance to kill. Um, that Vahen there. He didn't get that Binding Light, that, that Binding Light buff, or Shining Light buff. However, they need to play more aggressive when they have that two versus one situation. Yeah, I feel like the second the Pooty Boots went through, he could have gone through with the Fox form oh, and followed yeah, up Break Shine. Oh, yeah, yeah, like auto attack, because the yep. auto attack does so much damage. I think maybe he was expecting there to be more enemies nearby and didn't want to overcommit, but either way, a potential miss kill here as once again we do see Drawn to Fame instantly going in on this dragon. And watch how fast it falls. Wizard is going to try and snipe him, but he's just too late. We do have the Being a Bro coming in the Dark Splitter as well. Lucifer is getting chunked, but a great Earth Splitter connected. Every single member do with the Being a Bro going off. And the Ryu nicely done finding Zoom and Fly, though, is going to get chunked. The stun's coming through from the Valheim. Chainsy seeing him into the ground. Wizard falls as well. That is going to be a solid, convincing fight for Drawn to Fame. Yeah, you saw the Agenic Spinner come from across. However, Waya did an awesome job canceling that so he could not come to the fight and turn it around. It's a really nice job by Waya on this Argent play, but you saw the damage that Jinnar did. Lucifer needs to stay in, I feel, and just do as much damage as you can before you die because he's dying and trying to run away, but he needs to stay in the fight and just basically let Yikes clean up after him. Look at the chain CC. Blade's able to steal the buff through all of that, but Drawn to Fame stole the life of his teammate. <laughs> yeah, dirty, and Yikes is now getting fed. 
He is starting to do two, almost 2,000 crit. I wouldn't be surprised if he finished his Clive Sancti. Rank Breaker is just done by Blitz here, but he's level 12. Yikes is level 13. Look at the gold difference, 5.7 versus 4.5. 1k plus gold ahead. Yes, and he definitely has Clive Sancti finished. This Valheim, 7.9 Yeah, he's K. fed. He oh, is so fast. And he has Clive Sancti. Oh, my goodness. Oh, this is going to be... Oh, man. Well, he, that's a fun build. Oh, and he just finished this. He's, he's six stacked, basically. Yeah. That's huge, and there's not a lot of armor on the side of Benavidovici here, so they're in big trouble. Yeah, this this Valheim is going to start to hit like a truck. He's, only, he's not critting for a whole lot, but he's hitting real fast, and that's part of the difference maker here. Another enraged Abyssal Dragon. All right, so the first enraged oh, Abyssal no, Dragon. Oh, no, McFly, you're dead. That was not the call. That was not the play here, sir, and now also joining him in the death pile is going to be Rude. Goodbye, Rude, and that's a five person. There's no reason to Gen Splendor. Your friend is by himself against five people. You're not going to save him like the angel from heaven you want to be, Rude, unfortunately. He's going to fall, and as a result, much uh, much match prep pressure is opened up for John Defey. Now they can take the jungle. They can take another tower with a bot lane lane pushing with a huge wave coming their way. Yikes is 2.5k crits right now. They have a Valheim, they have double marksmen in the late game with a combined, I don't know, 16k they have a that network. Protect and engage. Oh boy, this Whoa. is just the high ground tower. This is Wizard getting absolutely deleted. There are no times to be bros here. There was only time to fall Ooh. stun into the magnetic storm. Absolute mass. The Rio, though, is going to connect onto four members, but it's not enough. The heal is there to follow up. Waya is going in once again. This is drawn to fame like I wanted to see. Whoa. Oh, the glaives! Man, look at that attack speed and the stuns coming out there. Curse death, pocket glaive, third attack, stun, stun. You are gone, Vada. You stand no chance. And no. oh no, ninja. Yeah, I mean, there was an attempted flicker there, and that's going to be GG, game number one. Oh, drop the fame. Drawn to Fame pulls out their best ballpoint pen in game number one and draw a nice little Fame star over the corpses of VVV with a well-executed strategy. And in Virum, if you've said it once, you've said it again. When Drawn to Fame shows up, they can actually play the game. Yeah, they did so many things well. I mean, some things that the camera wasn't on, but like Waya canceling the Angelic Spender from across, it could have turned that fight completely around. You can see the potential of this team, and if they show up and they put their hearts into it and play serious, this is the outcome. They looked really good. They looked really good, and yeah. I just wish we saw this team more often because they have the you, you say it. They have the potential. The mechanics are there. They just need to be able to say, look, sometimes we might lose, but we're going to get better for it. Yeah, but Zoom, though, 16 assists. Oof. Landing some clutch earth splitters, allowing Yikes to just mow down the competition. And of course, Hikes, I mean, he did such a good job on this Valheim, winning his side lane, dominating McFly. Look, he had the most damage, he had the most towers, he had the most gold. I mean, that Valheim just ran away with it. And Zoom had 100% kill participation. If there's anything that you could ever want in a support, it's to be there for your team. <laughs> and hey, if you're there 100% of the time, you know you're doing something pretty you're good. You're supporting your team. Literally doesn't get any better than that. 100% of the time, those Earth Splitters consistently, I think he whiffed one in the entire game. Every other one was sending two or three people. Yeah, three or three people. formerly AKA known as Chicken. He played in other mobile esports, just known as a mechanical god. Season one of Valor, right? He played an amazing Alice, and then Lumber showed up. He played Lumber amazingly, so I'm surprised that he's making Lumber so effective, because Lumber is not really meta. Uh, not he's that always, often. he's never been bad. Yeah, he's never been bad. Uh, other, other, other supports came up into prevalence, but Lumber's always been a good pick. Well, we can go ahead and actually see some of the excellence that Drawn to Fame showed in that game number one with our AT&T replay of the game, getting themselves immediate control of the Abyssal Dragon. Yeah, I love how they play Morin here. When Morin's attacking a single target, he gets his stacks up, and Wizard, you're in a tough spot here. He's going to use that. The Angelic Splitter comes down, but look at the damage, and look at that beautiful Earth Splitter, and then all the AoE from Jin are coming in there. Belusor will fall here, but look at Yikes just falling up and securing so many kills. And once again, not arriving was Zenial. 
That was huge. The fact that the Ardun was able to use the call to keep him up there during that time, right before Xenio thought he was going to be able to come in and save his team, because uh, a big shield explosion, a good Malleus could have changed that fight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But instead, Ardun was just like, 